Working at height can be extremely dangerous. Falls are number one on OSHA's Fatal 4 list, and it also tops the list of most frequently cited OSHA standards violations. If you do have a fall, you rely on the equipment that protects you to keep you safe. In this series, we'll learn how to inspect your fall protection gear to make sure it does just that. In today's episode, we'll look at your harness. If your harness fails, the results could be catastrophic. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to perform an inspection on your harness and know what the rejection criteria looks like that would cause a harness to be pulled from service. My name is Ben, and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today, we talk with Tom Horner, Inspection Manager at Mozilla, to learn how to properly perform a harness inspection. Before putting your harness on, or putting it back on the shelf, you need to inspect it and make sure it is safe for use. Tom will walk us through how to do that and show us some examples of criteria that should stop you from putting the harness on and cause you to pull it from service. So, let's get into it. The initial is gonna be when you receive the harness from whomever you purchased it from. You wanna to wanna to make sure it's the right harness. Uh, make sure it's the right size, the right model. Make sure uh, you run over it just like you would a normal inspection. Make sure there's no defects that you can visually see. The next would be frequent, which would be your daily use um, inspection. When the individual uh, goes to put it on for the first time, they're going to inspect it hand over hand. And I would also suggest, depending on the application, that they do an inspection after they take it off because there are situations where harnesses are shared. So you want to make sure that after you're done using it, you want to make sure that if you're putting it back on the shelf, it's safe to be put back on the shelf. And then the periodic is going to be the, at a minimum, once every 12 months, not to exceed, where it is a documented inspection of each harness. That's going to be determined on, again, the frequency and, uh, and severity of use of the harness, depending on the environment and all the other considerations. Third parties are often called in to do the periodic inspections of the personal fall protection. Um, that's a, a service that we do engage in. All of our inspectors go through the proper training, um, are deemed competent. When a uh, customer hires us to do their periodic inspection, they have designated us to do that inspection and make those decisions. Yeah, you're going to refer to um, your industry via OSHA and ANSI Z359. Um, the harness uh, manufacturer's requirements and also your own internal requirements. Always starting with the tag, we want to make sure this is as black and white as possible. We want to make sure we have a perfectly legible tag. And then again, we're looking for any type of damage to the hardware, which would be deformation, heat damage, well damage, modification. Throughout the webbing, the load bearing webbing particularly, we want to make sure there's absolutely no heat damage, no weld splatter, no chemical damage, no stitching being pulled apart, no cuts, no snags because there isn't really any gray area in there. If it suffers any of that kind of damage, it is an immediate fail and pull from service. As I begin my inspection on any harness, the very first place I go is the manufacturer's tag. And I'm gonna make sure, number one, it's absolutely clear and legible. Wanna make sure we see the manufacturer's name. We wanna know the unique serial number and make sure that that's completely legible because that has to be traceable back to the manufacturer and all the materials that they use to make the harness. We want to know the model number of the harness. We want to know the sizing. We want to see the date of manufacture because that will play a part in the inspection. And make sure that, like I said, all of the tag itself is absolutely legible. So with this harness right here, I can already see that that is the case. So now I'm going to begin my hand over hand inspection of the harness. First thing is I'm always going to recommend, and it is recommended that you do your inspections without gloves because you need to be able to feel the material. 
Um, obviously, you might make some considerations if you were working in a facility that dealt heavily in chemicals and you need to protect yourself, or even something crazy like a sewage treatment plant where obviously you're going to take certain precautions. But again, uh, bare hands, and we want to start at the top with your first buckle right here. We're checking to make sure that um, it moves freely, that there's no distortion. We want to make sure that there's no corrosion, no heat damage, weld splatter, etc. And then I'm going to begin my hand over hand as I work through the different portions of the webbing. Feeling for, again, any heat damage. I'm looking for UV damage. I'm looking for cuts, snags. I'm going to be examining the stitching of the harness to make sure the stitching isn't being pulled apart. With your stitching, you want to be a little mindful. At the end of their sewing pattern, there might be a little piece of, of stitching hanging out where they snipped it maybe a little long. Um, just make sure that it's not pulling apart. Working my way down from the top, just continuing to examine all of the different pieces of hardware, checking for distortion, making sure everything, uh, the fitment is proper, everything is moving freely. One portion of the every harness that you want to pay attention to is making sure that things are fitting properly, making again so that there's no distortion, making sure again that everything uh, moves freely through each other, hand over hand, again, checking for any kind of damage, any kind of uh, deformities. So really at the end of the, the visual inspection of a harness, after you've gone hand over hand, the tag reads legible, you haven't found any damage, the coloring, the, there's no UV damage, no chemical damage, that would be caused to uh, document this as a pass and leave it in service. We're going to walk through another visual inspection of a, of a body harness here. Again, first thing I'm going to seek out is the manufacturer's tag. Uh, this company does a real nice job of providing a protector for their tag. Uh, very important, again, because they understand that the tag must be absolutely legible. So as I come to the manufacturer's part of the tag, I can see who the manufacturer is. I can clearly see the manufacturer date, the serial number, the batch, the size, and the model number. Everything is absolutely clear and legible with this harness. And now I'm going to go uh, continue with my hand over hand, again using bare hands because I want to be able to feel the material. At the top here with these types of harnesses, sometimes what you see is this, this little plate right here, divider uh, or separator of the, the different uh, legs of the, the harness. Sometimes these will get cracked, bent, um, or, or broken in half. So everything is looking okay there. I'm checking to make sure that this little protector in here is protecting the webbing from the buckle here. We have a nice little non-load bearing, but protector for the, uh, the person wearing uh, the harness, a little bit of padding. So I'm running my fingers through, just trying to feel any kind of defects, see if there's any weld splatter, heat damage. So we're looking for all these types of damages to occur. Again, very nice stitching, making sure everything is in place, nothing is being pulled apart through all of this. Working my way down. As we work our way down and we're checking all the different pieces of hardware, this harness has a number of grommets um, for the adjustment of the, of the lower legs, how it goes around your legs. Again, we're going to want to make sure that there's no deformation in any of these grommets. Make sure there's no deformation in this buckle right here, across all the buckles. So as I'm looking through this, I haven't really found any tears, any cuts, any heat damage, but what I have found is going to be UV damage. If you can see the color of this part of the webbing right here, we have a very, very bright and vibrant orange. As we get towards some of these other pieces of webbing, you can see where it's faded quite a bit. That fading is going to indicate that there's some sort of a loss of strength in this webbing itself, which would be cause for me to reject it and pull it from service and document it as such on the inspection report. On this particular harness, first thing I can come to is the tag is completely worn off. Something happened 
uh, whether a chemical got on this, um, some sort of solvent, and completely wore off the information of the tag. So that would have been an immediate fail in itself. But as I walk through it, we can see that there's many types of cuts. There's a hole from some sort of a heat damage, various levels of cor corrosion uh, that are taking place. Here the harness was dipped or coated in some sort of a paint and you can feel the difference in the type of webbing. The webbing should kind of be soft and pliable. This is now hard and uh, crisp. Definitely gonna be a loss of strength. And on this particular harness here, we can obviously see some pretty extreme deformation to the uh, ring of this harness where one would tie off to. Definitely something you're gonna be looking for across all of the hardware on the harness and this would be immediate cause for a rejection. This next harness, again, a great example. Um, this tag was melted, uh, definitely went through some heat damage, so again, illegible would be an immediate fail at that point. As I'm going through this, I can feel the webbing isn't as, again, soft and pliable. It doesn't have the color that it should have. I could open up this little piece, little area here, and you can see how one time it was a vibrant blue, and now we can see that it's faded. As I'm running my hand over the webbing, I can feel some issues with the webbing. I've discovered what I'm gonna call out as weld splatter damage. I can visually see two little puncture holes from where some weld splatter hit the webbing, and I can absolutely feel it. And again, that's expressing the importance of why you wanna do this without gloves, at, if at all possible, because you have to be able to feel uh, those small uh, issues within the webbing. And this would be enough to pull this harness from service, regardless of the rest of the harness was perfectly okay. This harness here, somebody has written a name on in some sort of a marker. Make sure that you do not engage in that practice or promote that practice, because what has happened is there was a chemical introduced to the load-bearing webbing of this harness, and we would mark it for failure based on that. Do not write on the load-bearing uh, webbing of your harness. I want to reiterate that it's very, very black and white. The harness is either in really perfect shape or it's not. Um, there's going to be somebody who's wearing this, that in the worst case scenario, it's going to keep them from going over a leading edge. It's going to keep them protected in a fall. So we want to make sure that we're making all the right decisions based on uh, maximum safety. One of the biggest things to remember is that you are responsible for your own safety. You need to inspect your own harness pre-use anytime you are putting one on. If you see anything you think is questionable, don't use it. When in doubt, pull it out. Get it looked at by a competent person or replace it. To help identify harness removal criteria, you can download our free visual guide. Find the link in the description below. Use it as a reminder every time you check your harness. And remember to always follow your harness's manufacturer's recommendations. I hope after watching this video, you have a clear understanding of how to inspect your harness and you know exactly what you're looking for and what removal criteria looks like. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, drop it in the comments so we can get you an answer. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.